Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a doctor in the emergency department? Well, if you have, then you're in luck. My name's Sarah, I'm a doctor in the UK, and I make videos about my life and work as a doctor. This week I have vlogged the whole week and I'm gonna take you along for the ride with me. I hope you guys enjoy this video and don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you do. When I make these kind of videos, I always get asked, what does my rotor look like? So here is what my week looks like this week. On Monday, I'm working four till two. Then on Tuesday, I have teaching followed by a shift that finishes at midnight. Wednesday, I have my only day off of the whole week. Thursday and Friday, I'm on a course. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I'm doing night shifts. I hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more vlogs. Hello guys, I thought I would start another weekly vlog. Um, I just uploaded one yesterday of about five days in my life and you guys seem to love it even though it was a really long one. So I thought I'd do more of these kind of videos. It's four o'clock on a Monday afternoon and I am just about to start work. So this morning was pretty uneventful. I woke up really late. I'm absolutely knackered because I did uh, nights all of last week. And I think I was averaging like, I don't know, four or five hours sleep a night. So you can see from my eyes that I'm very very tired i'm kind of getting by on dry shampoo and coffee at the moment <laughs> that is holding my life together anyone else know how i feel as junior doctors we rotate round jobs i'm in my final week of four months in the emergency department today i'm working 4 p.m till 2 a.m I'm ready to start work and here is my gorgeous outfit of the day and in fact this is my outfit every day when I'm in the emergency department. I've got my stethoscope around my neck and then in my top pocket I've got this pen torch which is really useful for doing neurological exams on patients. Then I always have a minimum of two pens on me. Anyone who works in healthcare will know that your pen will always run out at the worst time and if you lend your pen to someone you're not going to get that back. Around my lanyard I have my emergency alarm and my name badge and then the good thing about scrub is you have such big pockets so I fill them with all the things I need. I've got eye drops, lip balm and hand cream and that is just because the aircon makes my skin and my eyes so dry and then in my other pocket I always have these scraps of paper that I just use to jot down notes about patients before I type them up just to jog my memory and the great thing about working in the emergency department is you can wear trainers. Whatever you want. Okay I'm, I'm filming now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want that banana bread or something? That? Yes please. Hannah is literally the best. She always brings me in treats. Here you go. Thank you so much. It's oh my God. One that's in. I'm definitely gonna enjoy this on my break. One of the best things for me about working as a doctor is that I've been able to work with a lot of my good friends from medical school. And that's pretty fortunate because you have no time to socialize outside of work. I can't obviously actually film in A&E. So here is me on my break, enjoying some delicious and healthy food. It's 11 o'clock at night now and I'm on my break and I always wear my coat on my break because I would get really cold in the hospital, especially at this time of night. Anyway, I just thought I'd tell you about a couple of the cases that I've seen tonight. Obviously, I have to keep it confidential and I won't say any patient's name. I thought that you guys would probably find it interesting to hear the kind of things that I've been seeing. So I'm working in majors tonight and I'm also covering an area which is like a short stay ward. And the patients in the short stay ward kind of just need reviews every now and then. So the first patient that I saw in majors was an 86 year old man and he came in after collapsing at home. His wife found him like sweaty, pale. He'd collapsed from a chair onto the floor. When he was picked up by the ambulance, they did an ECG on him, which is a tracing of the heart. And they found that his heart was in an abnormal rhythm. And for those of you that are medically inclined, his heart was in fast AF, so fast atrial fibrillation. When we did a set of bloods on him, we found that he's got some raised inflammatory markers, which shows he's got an infection going on somewhere. Um, the problem was, we don't know where the infection is. So it's hard to know what to treat and what antibiotics to give. So we do a few things to try and work out where the infection is. Obviously your history, so you ask the patient about any symptoms they might have had and then you might do some investigation, a urine dipstick test which can tell you if there's an infection in the urine and we can do chest x-ray to see if there's any infection going on in the lungs. 
those are quite common sources of infections. So yeah, that was my first patient. Then I went around to the short stay unit and made sure that the patients were okay around there. I thought it was going to be nice and simple, but things are never, never as simple as they seem. And I had a patient who had come in after taking a paracetamol overdose because he had a really bad toothache and he thought that taking more and more paracetamol would cure the toothache. And that's actually a really common presentation in the emergency department. I've been so surprised at how many times I've seen patients who do that. And so don't take overdoses of paracetamol people because it's very bad for your liver. So he was having some medication which helps detox the liver. I was asked by the nursing staff to go and speak to this gentleman because he was coming, becoming quite agitated and he wanted a doctor to see him. So I went to go and see him and I'm going to tell you about that conversation when I get in the car because it was quite a heated conversation. Then I had another patient who he is known to have cancer and he'd come into hospital because he was having some abdominal pain. They did a CT scan to see if it was like an obstruction in his bowel or to see whether the cancer had grown and what they actually found was that he had a perforation of his bowel, which means that his bowel has a hole in it. So he needed the surgeons immediately to see him. So that was quite a panic because in the short stay ward, you're not expecting the patients to be like super sick. They've been moved around from majors or from resus because they're more stable. So I had to do loads of things to manage him. And then the surgeons came and reviewed him and he's being transferred to a surgical ward as we speak. That's kind of the end of my break at the moment. I've seen a few more patients, but I don't really have time to tell you about them now. So I'm gonna go back to work, hoping that the last few hours are uneventful. And then I'll tell you more about my shift. Okay, so as you can see right now, I'm a bit of a tearful mess which is not how I like to normally end my shifts. The patient that I mentioned before my break, it was quite a difficult conversation that I'd had to have. He needs a tooth extraction and that needs to be done by his dentist, not A&E. It was very frustrating for him because he wanted to come and get the problem sorted and I completely understand that. And it was difficult to get a word in edgeways and then he phoned up all of his family who came and joined in the discussion. To put it bluntly, I stood there and just was had a go at for like, 10-15 minutes straight and I was trying my best to explain that I really do want to provide good care for this gentleman and I want to be able to get him the help he needs but I don't think the information that I was saying was kind of being taken on board by the patient or their family. Some not very nice things were said to me and it was just at the end of a shift so I was kind of, I'm just kind of tired and I found it quite hard to take on. I don't ever normally cry, especially at work. I tried to keep my cool and actually I think I, I think I did quite a good job of keeping my cool in front of them and when it got to the, towards the end of the conversation and I realised that we weren't reaching suitable resolution, I just said, I've heard everything you've told me, I agree that you need to have your tooth taken out. Unfortunately, we can't provide that service for you here, so I'm going to give you the medication you need. It's time for you to go home now, and unfortunately, this conversation has come to an end, and I walked away, even though they were still hurling abuse at me. And then as soon as I got back to my computer and sat down and started typing, I just burst into tears. And you know when you like hoping that no one's gonna notice, but all the nurses noticed, and they were really sweet and like came and patted my back and stuff. <laughs> Not a very happy end to my shift. So anyway, it's now 20 to 3 in the morning. I have to be up and out of the house by about 12 tomorrow midday. So I'm going to drive home, get myself into bed and probably turn up to work tomorrow with really puffy eyes. <sighs> I wish I could just make it so that all these vlogs are like shiny, happy, sunshine vlogs like the vlogs that I enjoy watching rather than me sitting in my car in the car park in the middle of the night crying <sighs> but anyway this is actually how my life is going right now so I hope you guys are enjoying the very open and honest vlog <sighs> let's hope for a better day tomorrow oh I'm just pulled up at the side of the road because <sighs> I forgot that there's a road closure tonight and I can't get home my usual way and I'm about halfway home and I'm gonna have to go back. This is so annoying. <laughs> oh, I just want to go home and get into my bed. I am over today. I'm so over it. 
definitely got the puffy eyes. Six hours sleep does not look good on me. <laughs> oh God, right, time to get up. I've mentioned this in previous videos and I'll say it again because it still holds true, but one thing that I find that gets me through working long hours is definitely eating healthily and meal prepping as much as I can. So I've got a green smoothie here. This is not my breakfast, this is just something that I'm having as a snack to add in as much veggies and fruit as I can. So my original plan this morning was to get up and wash my hair, but that did not happen so we are going with the dry, dry shampoo life once again. And I've got this little curl here from where my hair escaped from my shower cap. But we're working with it, it's good, it's fine. I think that now I've got my makeup on, my eyes don't look quite so puffy, so I'm hoping that no one asks me if I'm okay today because I'm feeling a little bit fragile still. I'm just gonna put on a smile and hope that I start to feel a bit better as the day goes on. So today I have teaching. It's about 12 now and I'm just about to leave and go to teaching. Um, as part of our F2 curriculum, we have to go to a certain amount of teaching over the course of the year to pass the year and to get signed off for our portfolio. The teaching that I'm going to today is at a different hospital over on the other side of the city. So time for some teaching. I'm Radhika. Finish all the time. Lisa! Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> Teaching was good and I caught up with a load of friends from when I was in F1 so that really put a smile on my face and cheered me up a bit from yesterday. Anyway, now I'm driving over to the other side of the city to the hospital that I'm working in and I've still got about an hour and a half or two hours until my shift starts so I'm going to use that time to go to the library and work on my portfolio. I've got loads of cases and things that I need to write up and I find that there's a lot of hoops to jump through in medicine but if you're organised with your time then you can get these things done so using spare bits of time like this is really useful. Well, it's about midnight now and my shift is done. And as you can see, I've got a smile on my face. So uh, yeah, this shift was a lot better. I definitely feel like I'm getting quicker at seeing patients. I'm more streamlined in my approach. Like when I was first working in A&E a few months ago, I was trying to be really thorough, which I still do, but I've kind of worked out a few of the things that I don't need to do now, which makes me work quicker. I saw a patient today who had pneumonia and pneumonia is an infection in the lungs which shows up on an x-ray and the history was quite straightforward, the examination was very straightforward, the x-ray was exactly as you'd expect for a pneumonia and so were all the blood tests. But because it was so straightforward I even started to question myself because I'd got through this clerking quicker than I've got through any clerking before. So I even went to go and check it with one of the consultants just to make sure I wasn't missing anything and he was like I don't know why you're asking me you've you've got the diagnosis um, move on to the next patient. So yeah it's quite nice to see that I'm actually making progress and that things are getting quicker and easier. But anyway, on my way back, I'm going to listen to a podcast. I've been really enjoying the Oprah Winfrey Super Soul podcast. It's just, she interviews all these different people about their lives. It's really interesting and quite heartwarming to listen to their stories and what they've learned from their different experiences. So if you're looking for a new podcast to listen to, I definitely recommend that one. I'm very much looking forward to my day off tomorrow. I'm going to try and get as much sleep as I can tonight because I think I really, really need it. I'm like struggling with this tiredness now and I also I have a course on Thursday and Friday which I need to prepare for so I've got a lot of personal life admin to do tomorrow and if I can fit it in I want to film a sit down video for my YouTube channel as well so a lot to get done but I am looking forward to being at home at least and having a day off We have been so lucky with the weather recently. Just look at this sunshine, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I wanted to do a workout and I did a fitness blender workout. Normally I'd try and get outside, especially when the weather's this nice, but I was just feeling this lazy that I didn't even want to leave the house at this point. So yeah, I'll link fitness blender down below. They're amazing and they're really helpful if you don't have a gym membership. So after I did my workout, I got myself dressed and put some nice clothes on and then I got on with some life admin for the day. Oh my gosh, it's really nice to be wearing some clothes that aren't scrubs or workout gear or pyjamas and actually get a little bit dressed up in some nice daytime clothes. I just wanted to show you guys something. My friend Faye, one of my best friends from school, has 
started a business a couple of years ago and she makes these gift boxes that you can send to people through the post so it's like sending a hug in the post it's called bear hugs gifts and i would definitely recommend checking them out i mean even if she wasn't my best friend i would absolutely recommend them they are so adorable anyway she asked me ages ago if i would knit some little baby hats for her to go in the baby boxes i've been doing that since i was in medical school and i just want to show you guys i've got a batch ready to send to her so i'm going to take them to the post office now these are what they look like. They are for newborn babies and I've made them with little bear ears so that they go with her theme of bear hugs gifts. I absolutely love making them and I think they're so cute. Every time I knit one I just think about the tiny baby that's going to get to wear this. So I'll link bear hugs down below and you guys can check them out. This is my outfit of the day. I've got this roll neck from Marks and Spencers on and I actually bought it in an oversize. I bought a size 14 and I normally wear an eight on top because I wanted like a loose oversized fit and I'm really happy with how this is. Super soft. And then I've got this skirt on with a bit of a, a flare to it. And this I bought on ASOS and it's from Naf Naf and it goes lower in the back. So covers your bum nicely. So Vince and I are going for a walk. Walkies. You're not walking, are you? I'm going my ski ball. <laughs> Can I jump on? Yeah, good try. Ready? <laughs> Ready? So I'm literally standing on the board with Vince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vince has not one but two skateboards like this. Oh, you got it, haven't you? <laughs> Don't be a loser. <laughs> when I said I wanted to come out for a walk, it was uh, mainly to get some exercise. <laughs> so uh, I've got to tell you something. I actually bought a second skateboard and used the excuse for buying the second skateboard as a present for Sarah. So the first one I bought, I went up into the loft and got up my old roller skates. Oh, that was good. <laughs> we went to a, an abandoned car park and I was dragging Sarah around on my roller skates on an electric skateboard. Ready? Yep, let's go. I'll work out for your love. <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah. Also very dangerous. Oh, absolutely, yeah. We've got into a really nice habit recently when I'm actually home in the evenings of going for a little walk and catching up about our day and I'm just finding it's such a lovely way to connect with each other. That was delicious and now I am just getting myself ready for tomorrow morning I've got a really early start with this course that I'm going on and I'm getting my green smoothies ready for the next two days here's how I prep my smoothies when I know I'm just going to be too busy to be chopping in the morning so in these Tupperwares I've got banana kiwi avocado cucumber a bit of fresh ginger and some mint leaves and you can either put these in the fridge or you can put them in the freezer it doesn't really matter then in the morning I will add some spinach and some water or some apple juice whatever I've got on hand I am just on my way to the course that I'm going to today. It's apparently there's no parking at Leicester Hospital or it's very difficult to park and I thought, you know, I can't be bothered to deal with the stress of trying to find a space. So I got the train and now I'm having a lovely walk to the hospital. I used to walk to medical school every day and it always used to kind of brighten up my morning and make me feel fresh for the day. So yeah, quite enjoying the walk. And looking forward to seeing what this course has in store. I'm most looking forward to seeing my friends because I know that a few of them are doing the course as well. This patient's got really broad pleurisis, really horrible pleurisis, tainted T waves. Hey Pips! Hi! <laughs> On the way to lunch, finally, after yeah. a lot of long sessions. Pippa's just been really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting some food. Yay! <laughs> I'm just about to go home now. That felt like a really long day. There were some practical skills, but it was mostly just kind of like sitting down and doing classroom learning, which I don't mind, but um, it was quite intense with not really many breaks and no refreshments. I think I might go for a run this evening or definitely do something to move my body because I'm just feeling like I've been on my bum all day. Throughout the course of F1 and F2, we have to do a number of mandatory courses. And this was actually one that was a mandatory course, but we got to choose what it was that we did. And I think there were like six or eight different choices. And my one that I chose today was care of the critically ill medical patient. It's a two day course. We covered a load of different topics, acute liver failure, 
cardiovascular emergencies. Yeah, it was a very full-on day. I feel like I learned quite a lot. It's quite fun to go on a course because it gets you off the ward and you're doing something different. I always feel like I take something away and I learn something new that I can put into practice when I get back to work. There's a lot of courses that we have to get done for our portfolio in order to pass the year. So you do have to be quite organised to make sure you book on them, make sure you get the time off with your rotor coordinator and then make sure you get your certificates, scan them in and upload them onto your portfolio online so that you can pass the year. So it just requires being a bit organised but if you keep on top of it it's not too much hard work. Nine o'clock at night now and we have completely crashed out we're so ready for bed so i think we're just going to get an early night and it feels so strange to have an evening or like two evenings in in a row with vince because obviously my job is such strange hours that i'm normally at work in the evening we had some dinner and then we went out for a walk again i'm editing a spring lookbook which i can't wait to show you guys another early start in the morning alarms going on for six good night Today is day two of the course and I'm aiming to look well put together but I also want to be comfortable so I'm going for French girl chic. Be on my vlog. <laughs> Vince has only just woken up. And he's very kindly giving me a lift to the station. He's literally gotten out of bed, chucked on a hoodie and coming straight out so I think he's actually still asleep. Are you safe to drive? I'm wearing my slippers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a yes. Ready for another day of the course and there's a few more practical skills today which we're all excited about and I'm gonna say that this guy is not very well. He doesn't look very alive. So course is done. It's lovely to see some friends and I'm really looking forward to a Friday night in with Vince. I don't know what we're gonna do but I think it will involve lots of food and maybe a glass of wine. I don't start my night shift until tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So yeah, I've only got two more shifts left in the emergency department and then I am absolutely done and we are going on holiday to celebrate the end. I've got a week off work, which I'm really looking forward to and I feel like I really need. We're gonna go away to Egypt. We wanted a bit of sunshine. So yeah, two more shifts. So I'm thinking about filming a holiday lookbook or a little holiday vlog. Would you guys be interested in seeing that? Let me know in the comments below. While I was waiting for my train, I went to Boots and I bought a few things for the holiday, a few different makeup products. So I'll show you guys those tomorrow. Sit down and do a little mini haul with you. Feeling super organized right now because I've just washed all of my makeup brushes. And right now I'm gonna take off all my makeup, put on a face mask, whiten my teeth, just start getting ready for the holiday. I've been whitening my teeth with this tooth whitening kit that I've, been, that I've been given from America. So if you guys are interested, I will make a video about that and how the process is going because I really do think it's made a bit of a difference. So comment down below if you are interested in seeing that. Good morning, it's Saturday and I'm feeling fresh. I didn't have to wake up with an alarm today. I've had a lie-in. I've got my night shift tonight, so I'm just gonna potter about the house today. I'm not gonna wear any makeup. I've got my hair in a messy bun. The main thing that Vince and I want to get done today is packing for our holiday. This is my outfit of the day. As you can see, I haven't even steamed or ironed this top. It's completely crinkled, but I'm not planning on going anywhere, so it doesn't really matter. And I've just got some comfy black skinny jeans and my lovely sheepskin slippers. So these are the beauty products I bought yesterday. I always fake tan, probably about once a week, and this one has been my new favorite. It's a one hour one. It's very expensive. I think it's like 18 pounds, but it's genuinely the best one I've found. So I'm not happy to spend the money, but I will spend the money because I love it so much. And then I got myself some dry shampoo because this is my savior. Well, I don't think that dry shampoo is something you need to spend a lot on, so I just buy the Boots own brand one. And a new tanning mitt because my current one is falling apart. And then a new brow pencil. If you guys haven't tried this one, it's amazing. I'm not very good at doing my brows, but this makes it really easy and quick. For any of you shiny girls out there, this is a must have product. Again, quite expensive. I think it's about £10, but you put this on under your foundation or even if you're not wearing foundation, you just put it on after your moisturiser and it takes away any of your shine. So for those of you who've asked me in the past how I keep my skin looking good after a night shift, this is how. I spent the rest of the afternoon packing and cleaning the house ready for holiday and we had this huge jacket potato cheese and salad for dinner. Time for work. 
The thing that I really like about night shifts is that you get your daytime free. So it's been really nice having my Saturday free with Vince and actually having a chance to sort the house out and pack. I don't know about you guys, but before I go on holiday, I always like to try and get the house in order and get everything clean, get all the washing done, just to kind of make sure that everything is nice for when I arrive back from holiday. The only problem with having such a nice day off today is that it made me really not want to come to work and not that I don't like work because I do enjoy my job, but I'd rather be at home with Vince on a Saturday night. Half past three in the morning and it's time for my break. I'm in recess tonight, so it's been quite an exciting shift really. It's eight o'clock in the morning and I'm just finishing my shift. I'm really quite tired at this point, but I didn't feel tired through the shift because the adrenaline just keeps you going. It was so busy in recess that you don't even have a time to stop and think. There's no better feeling in the world than walking out into this glorious sunshine when you finish your shift. It was a Saturday night, so most of the things I saw were people who'd taken drugs. So there were a lot of people in recess who were like, off their heads basically. I also saw someone who had an aortic dissection or well what I think is an aortic dissection at the moment he is in the CT scanner. I don't know what the result of it is but um, I will check that tonight because I'm quite interested to see what happens to the patient. But yeah recess was busy, fun and you know what it's really weird because yesterday I didn't sleep in the daytime like i i do struggle to sleep before a night shift as in like before my first night shift of a set of nights as i was coming into work i was like oh i'm gonna be really tired for my shift i hope i'm okay i hope i don't start feeling really sleepy but honestly like the adrenaline of being on shift the bright lights and the beepers and the fast pace of everything the kind of worry that your patients are so sick just honestly you you can't feel tired when all of that's going on. I remember when I used to do nights as a healthcare assistant and they would drag. I'd be like clock watching and waiting for the time to finish, just kind of waiting for the shift to end. But as a doctor, it's completely different. The time flies by and you, you don't even, you're like rushing to finish all your notes by the time that the shift is coming to an end. So yeah, it's a completely different experience. But anyway, I'm gonna drive home now and I'm gonna sleep. And tonight is my very last night shift in ED. I'm then having my holiday and then I start on a new job which is going to be neurosurgery. So I think I'm going to wrap this vlog up here because once again I think it's going to be an absolute monster vlog that's really long and as I said to you in my last vlog, if you've watched all of this far, make sure you leave me a comment down below and let me know that you watched to the end. You guys sent me lots of messages saying that you would like to see longer vlogs and so I'm trying to kind of make the videos that you want to see and tailor it to what you guys are interested in. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it or a thumbs down if you found it really boring and I hope that you found it entertaining in some way. Thanks for keeping me company, company on this whole week in my life. I want to say good night because it feels like I should be going to bed but good morning and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!